Hi, this is Adam from MakerState, and I'm here with our third webinar for the Maker Partnership Program. In this webinar, I'm going to discuss the Coding Blocks People Programming Challenge, as well as how to set your students up on Scratch. And I think these are two things that you should do together in one Makerspace period. The Coding Blocks Challenge can take about 45 to 50 minutes, and your last half an hour, 40 minutes or so, you can get your students signed up on Scratch accounts, and that way, next Makerspace, you can just start creating in Scratch, and you won't have to worry about getting students' accounts and, and you know all that, which can take up a lot of valuable class time when it's nicer to be building. So, um, before we get into the challenges, I did some school visits this week, and just a couple notes based on my school visits. Um, first of all, really important to build your prototypes for whatever challenge you're going to be presenting ahead of time and show them during your students during the discover phase and kind of to loop in this next point below. Um, it's important to in the discover phase make sure you're showing the entire scope of the lesson and show you know the full range of what students will do and where the lesson is going. It can be confusing when you don't show where the whole lesson is going and students kind of just have to blindly you know, go through the steps and not know what they're going to finish at, which is something I, I saw kind of happen a little bit. And, and, you know, it's better to just show the full arc and then students will know where they're going with everything they do. And it will probably prevent more missteps and, um, you know, confusion during the building process. Um, along with that, using the design cycle poster to uh, guide your students through the to guide your students through the, the design cycle, sorry, um, using your magnets with the design cycle poster and really highlighting the discover, create, and improve phases of the design cycle um, is something that we're really trying to instill in our students here, not just the, the challenges and the specific tech skills they'll be you know, uh, improving and, and building, but also just the idea of how to go about solving problems and how to go about engineering using this design process that we've highlighted here. And if for whatever reason you left training without a design cycle poster, which is something I saw at One Makerspace, um, if you don't have one, please reach out and we'll make sure to get one to you as soon as possible. And uh, lastly, some uh, I heard some comments just in office hours more so about not being able to uh, complete the rubrics at the end of class because there wasn't enough time, which is, you know, it's totally understandable that you get to the end of your class and you're rushing to finish the challenge and hand out the reports and everything else and the, the rubrics fall by the wayside. So what we really uh, suggest is that you hand out the rubrics at the beginning of class and encourage your students to, you know, check off parts of them as, as is appropriate as you go through the challenges themselves, okay? And some more general notes, um, you should see some emails from Roger and or Edgar about the Research Alliance survey that you should be completing in your makerspaces, uh, and you should probably allow 20 minutes to half an hour to do that based on what I've seen, so uh, definitely plan around that. And th there's a new link that came out for that in the last week, so make sure you're using the newest link that you've gotten from, from Edgar or Roger for that. Um, this week, Noah, uh, another Maker State Maker Fellow, will be covering the office hours. I'm unable to attend them, so maybe some of you uh, had office hours with Noah this morning, and he'll be there this Monday, which is the 22nd, and next Monday, the 29th. So Noah will be covering those office hours. He's very knowledgeable in all of the things we've been talking about and should be there to answer your questions. Also, we have Scratch Skills series going up on, on the uh, STEM Collab. So in your courses, you should all be subscribed to the Scratch Skills course, and we'll have 1 through 16 up by the time this, this webinar is posted. So go check those out. Those can be really helpful for using the different tools and blocks in Scratch and also just generally using the Scratch interface and interacting with the Scratch community. And along those same lines, we have Scratch debugging challenges up now in another course that you should all be subscribed to called Scratch debugging challenges, which are debugging challenges based on our Scratch Basics series. So as you go through the Scratch Basics series, you can go to those debugging challenges and use them to practice the skills you learn in the Scratch Basics. And finally, uh, STEM Collab participation, just make sure you're doing those quizzes and those prep and practice comments and prompts as you're prepping for these lessons. It's a really good way for us to know, you know how, how these lessons are working in your classroom and how you're engaging with the STEM Collab. And it, it's really helpful for us, and we hope it's really helpful for you, too, to have a firm under, understanding of you know what these concepts are and also how your colleagues are implementing them in different makerspaces. Okay, so moving along to the Coding Blocks Challenge. Uh, in this challenge, you need those printed scratch blocks that you received during training. Um, 
Optionally, you can have some props for your different prompts for the for the coding block challenges, and we'll get to that later. You should have your rubric and parent report, and then kind of separating this into the uh, coding blocks and the scratch sign up. You also want your charged computers and internet access for after you finish the coding blocks challenge when you move on to signing your students up on scratch. So the discover phase of this, the whole idea is we're introducing what is a programming language and what is a block programming language even more specifically. And we're introducing the idea of using these blocks that we can write on and fill in blanks on to create sequences of, of instructions or programs that we're later going to use in Scratch to program our computers. In this challenge, we're going to use them to program each other to complete tasks or use these programs to talk about different routines that we go about during our day. Okay? So you should use these questions up here to start a discussion, either as a think, pair, share, or a group discussion. What is a programming language and what are programming languages used for? So take some time to hear some students' opinions on that. And then eventually we want to introduce block programming and the printed scratch blocks. And you might even want to pull up scratch here for a moment and say, here's the programming language that we're going to get into later today and later on in this year. And we're going to use these printed scratch blocks as a way to plan and practice some of our uh, programming skills. Okay. And one way to do this as a class is just to use, you know, an optional prompt to write a program together. How do you start your school day? In your school so what you know routines or special things do you do at the beginning of your school day um, or how would you get from the current how would you get to your current classroom from your school's entrance so what program the movements would you have to go in the door or would you take a right and go up the stairs or would you have to repeat going up to a different floor several times or you know what physical movement instructions can you try to program using the scratch blocks that you have okay and here's some different, uh, so after you do this circle briefing, this discover phase, you're going to break your class up into groups and give them some prompts to create programs for on their own. And these can be a mix of describing routines or prompts on how to physically act out something, you know, in your classroom. So here are just some prompt ideas I wrote out. Programming your morning routine using programming blocks. Program how to get uh, to your school from home. Program how to get from the door of your classroom to the current seat. So would you have to walk forward five steps and then turn right and walk right five steps and turn left and walk left two steps, thinking about the, you know, the geography of the desks and chairs in your classroom. And along those lines, you can also move desks and chairs or other objects into a maze or obstacle course in your classroom and have your students write programs to get through that. Okay? And so for each prompt, have your students, whoops, for each prompt, have your students share their programs or for ones that might physically be interacting with your classroom, actually run their code and act out the things that they've programmed. And, you know, take time to think about debugging if there's issue, you know, if things don't work exactly the way the way they intend they will, right? Take time to debug their issues and, and think about how to improve the code and use all the blocks, okay? So now I'm going to move on to some Scratch setup. And so again, Scratch... You get to scratch at scratch.mat.edu. You should have all signed up for teacher accounts during the training. And if you don't have your teacher account or you've somehow lost it or you need help signing up again, get in contact with me and I'll show you how to get that teacher account back. And then right now I'm going to show you how to create classes, which are kind of groups of students that you can easily assign uh, projects to. So we're going to talk about adding students, sharing projects in studios. And I just want to make a note that in those scratch skills lessons that I, I referenced before, I talk about a lot of this stuff even in more depth than I will right now in scratch skills number 10, which is specifically about using teacher accounts and creating classes. Okay, so with no further ado, we're going to go over here to scratch. And here's my scratch homepage. And with my teacher account, I have this purple bar that appears here in the middle of my page. And I can go to my classes, which will open up this list of classes here that um, well, these are classes that I've created, but you probably won't see any. So you're going to go to new class to create a new class. And you can name your class and provide a description if you'd like. And once you have a new class, you can go to students and begin adding students to your class. So there are a few different ways to add students to your class. One, you can add them one by one, and this um, involves making a username for every student, entering that username, and adding your students one by one. 
I find that to be pretty tedious. So what I like to do instead is this second option, which is the student sign-up link. And what this will do is it will generate a URL that students can enter to get to your Scratch class. So if I go to that link that I just generated right there, we have this uh, invitation link to join the Scratch class. If I click Get Started, I can create a username and a password and go through uh, you know, the motions of signing up for the Scratch class, at which point your students will you know, kind of auto-populate this student region over here. Or finally, what you can do is you can use a CSV file to upload a list of students and passwords to, uh, to your class, which is a very efficient way to do it if you're familiar with making CSV files. You can make them in Excel or, or Google, Google Sheets, I'm pretty sure. Um, and you know, there's a little bit more information here if you want to learn more about CSV files. Um, but usually I use this student sign-up link. It allows students to create their own usernames, which I feel like is, is good and useful for them remembering them. Um, and I'm going to show you a trick to make this uh, even easier. So here we've generated this, this student sign-up link, and it's kind of long and ugly, and no student is going to type this in. And because of that, I would use a website called tinyurl.com. And what tinyurl does is it can take this big, ugly URL, and shorten it to a small URL. So if I just type in, you know, uh, let's type it in my test class. So tinyurl.com slash my test class, or maybe you know you can type in the name of your school or something more specific. Say PS two hundred scratch or or whatever you want, and then you click t make tiny URL, and your new URL is created, and now someone simply just has to go to tinyurl.com slash ps200 scratch, and it will take me to that same link. Okay? And I just went through that quickly. Again, if you want to, uh, if you want a little bit more information on that, you can go to the Scratch Skills video number 10, and I walk through that a little bit more slowly. Um, the other thing I want to show you quickly is how you can use studios. So a studio is just a collection of projects. You can call this my studio. And if you make a studio inside your class, all projects you add to it will be visible to your students. So if I start adding projects to it, you know, all my projects appear here at the bottom. I can just start adding them like so. And you can also allow your students to add projects by clicking this allow anyone to add projects, which is really nice for just collecting your students' projects as they use Scratch. Um, so anyway, here's a quick tour of kind of the back end of the, te the Scratch teacher account. So you can use that to get your students set up on Scratch. And once they're set up on Scratch, I think you can just let them explore the create section for you know the remainder of, of this period and then get into the great race. Oops. And then get into the great race in your next makerspace. So I hope this was a helpful video about the Scratch coding blocks, about the, sorry, the People Programming Coding Blocks Challenge and just some Scratch basic startup knowledge. And I hope to see you back for the next webinar. Thanks for watching.